Now, we're going to do a particularly tricky problem um, that I have used on exams in the past. Don't know if I'll use on this one, um, but uh, at first glance, when, you, when I write the problem out, you're going to think, how on earth are we going to solve this problem? But I promise you have all of the tools to make it happen, okay? So in this problem, we're going to use density, percent mass, and stoichiometry to answer a question. All right, and here is the question. So we have an alloy. We have an alloy that is 93.7% aluminum by mass. Density of that alloy is 2.85 grams per cubic centimeter. So here's our real question. So that's basically just background information. Our real question is if a 0 0.691 cubic centimeter piece of alloy reacts with hydrochloric acid, what mass of hydrogen gas is made? Okay, now looking at the reaction equation, so I'm gonna take a little like half step back and remind you about nomenclature. Okay, nomenclature trips up students all of the time. And the best way that I can recommend to get good at nomenclature is to constantly practice nomenclature. It's very much like learning a foreign language. If you use it regularly, you'll be good at it. So looking at this reaction equation, it's to your benefit to actually name the things that are there. Okay, so we have aluminum solid, and then the name for that HCl, right, it starts with a hydrogen, so it's an acid. There are only two elements there, so it's a binary acid. So we have to start the word with hydro, chlor, ic acid. And then our next compound in the, uh, the first one in the products, it's ionic and it's binary. There are only two elements there. Even though there's three chlorines, it's still only aluminum and chlorine there. So binary ionic, we say aluminum, chlor, ide, and then hydrogen gas. Okay, remembering the AQs mean aqueous. That means that HCl is in a solution of water, a homogeneous mixture in water, and the aluminum chloride is in a homogeneous mixture with water. All right, so now, coming back to the, the problem at hand. So in order for me to find out how much hydrogen gas is made, what do I need to know? I need to know moles of aluminum. Okay, in order to get to the hydrogen gas, I need to start with the aluminum because that's what I have all the information about. Okay, so how do I get to the amount of aluminum? Okay, the first thing I need to know is what is the mass of the alloy? of the piece of alloy that we've got. All right, so we have density of the alloy and we have volume of the alloy. Just to highlight those, I have density, which is a conversion factor, and I have volume. So that will give me mass of the alloy piece. All right, so I'm gonna start with the 0.691 cubic centimeters of the alloy. And actually, I'm going to use my labels, cubic centimeters of alloy. 
I mentioned in the previous video the importance of using your labels, making sure you're keeping track of what you're talking about, okay? Helps to solve problems. When things go awry, you can always track your work. And we use the density like a conversion factor, grams of alloy per cubic centimeter of alloy. So my cubic centimeters of alloy will go away, leaving me with grams of alloy. And we get 1.969 grams of alloy. Tracking at the third sig fig. Okay, so now that I know grams of alloy, the next piece of information that I have is percent mass. Okay, it's 93.7% aluminum by mass. So remember, percent means per hundred, right? So 93.7% aluminum means that it's 93.7 grams of aluminum per hundred grams of alloy. Okay, so now guess what this is? It's a conversion factor. Right, so that's going to get me to grams of aluminum. So 1.969 grams of alloy. And it's 93.7 grams of aluminum per 100 grams of alloy. My grams of alloy will go away, leaving me with 1.8 four five grams of aluminum. Again, track, keep, keeping track of my sig figs at each step. All right, so I'm almost there. Now that I know grams of aluminum, I can get to moles of aluminum, then I can get to moles of hydrogen. Okay, and I'm gonna get to do this in one straight step all the way to grams of hydrogen. So 1.845 grams of aluminum, tracking at the third sig fig. So my first step is to go to moles. All right, before I can go to hydrogen, I have to get to moles of aluminum first. And I find that on the periodic table as one mole of aluminum is 26.98 grams of aluminum. So my grams of aluminum will cancel, so I'm at moles of aluminum at this step. I'm gonna scroll up to my reaction equation and my relationship of aluminum to hydrogen. All right, two moles of aluminum for every three moles of hydrogen. Straight from these coefficients, the two and the three. Okay, I'm not making up numbers, not trying to calculate anything. So three moles of hydrogen, I put that on top because that's what I want. For every two moles of aluminum, I put that on bottom so that it will cancel out. So moles of aluminum go away. So at this stage, I have an answer that is moles of H2O. Or excuse me, just H2. <laughs> I love water so much. Now my final answer wanted to know what mass of H2 what mass of hydrogen gas. So I'm at moles of hydrogen gas. In order to get to grams of hydrogen gas, I use molar mass. Remembering that there are two atoms of hydrogen there. All right, so my moles of H2 will go away. And if I've used my labels correctly, I can clearly see that my final answer will be in grams of H2. And to three sig figs, our answer should come out to be 0 0.207 grams of H2. All right, so looking back at what we have here, so that first step was convert to moles of aluminum. I have to do that in order to start across the mole bridge. All right, here's our mole bridge. Right, that gets me from aluminum to hydrogen. If you want to think about like different countries, 
on the other sides of a, of a river, you know, the hydrogen uh, country and the aluminum country, and I'm crossing the bridge from one to the other. And then we go from moles of hydrogen to grams of hydrogen here. So our next topic for this video, uh, we're going to revisit some reaction categories. And we're going to add to our list. All right, so we have combustion. And believe it or not, the best equation is a combustion reaction because it is characterized by reaction with O2. You can always find a combustion reaction because you've got O2 by itself as a reactant. Okay. We have synthesis reactions, synthesis or combination reactions. And we can use the same reaction as an example of that. And giving us a good illustration that Many reactions fall under multiple categories. Okay, and synthesis is, remember, it's two or more things combining. All right, we have decomposition. An example of that would be some sulfur trioxide breaking down into sulfur dioxide and oxygen gas. All right, something breaking up. All right, and this is an interesting um, moment to, to talk about. Notice that I called that sulfur trioxide and not sulfate or sulfite. Um, so the name sulfite pertains to an ion. This is a neutral molecule. Okay, same thing with SO2, sulfur dioxide. All right, so be careful not to confuse your neutral molecules with your polyatomics. So we have two new categories to put on our list. So the first is called a single displacement. Okay, and essentially we have one thing trading places with another. So in a single displacement example, we would have some magnesium plus some copper sulfate becoming magnesium sulfate plus copper. Okay, notice that the magnesium and the copper just traded places. Right, so we've got trading dance partners, as it will, as uh, as it were. One thing trading places. Okay, hopefully by now you're starting to decipher my handwriting and that little squiggle at the end of T H I. That little squiggle means N G. <laughs> Or you may be sitting there cursing my handwriting and trying hard to figure out what I'm putting on the page. All right, and then we have a double displacement reaction where two things are trading places. An example of that would be some silver nitrate plus some sodium chloride. Again, in encouraging you to name the things Okay, as you're writing them down, write, write out, say out the names out loud to yourself. It will help your nomenclature. Making some sodium nitrate and some silver chloride. Okay, so taking, taking a look at what has happened here. So the silver 
was with the nitrate, and then on the product side, it's with the chloride. And the sodium was with the chloride, and then in, on the product side, it is traded to the nitrate. So our silver went over here, and our sodium went over here. We have two trading places. Okay, and we're going to be looking at a lot of um, double displacement reactions in upcoming chapters. Okay, it's a really common uh, reaction type. All right, that does it for this particular video. When we come back, we will be talking about um, a wonderful topic called limiting reactants. You're going to love it.